All right, everyone, this is a video on how to input scores in Illumin. So let's go for it here. So this is the home page for West Hills College Colinga. Going to, you do have to go to the portal in order to get to the Illumin website here. So mine is automatically, no, it's not. Um, entering your credentials. All right, and the Illumin link is going to be towards the right side of the page right here. It's going to say Illumin WHC Kalinga. That's the link that you want. It's going to be in blue already, as you see it here. Changes to a little gray. And then you do have to enter your credentials again. All right, it's just going to be your first name, last name, without the at whccd.edu. And then you're going to put in the same credentials that you use logging into your portal site. All right, so this is the first page. Let me go to a faculty look of it, because that's what we want to see. All right, I'm going to put myself into the math department. All right, the first thing that you should notice is make sure that you're on the faculty view, as you may have different roles based upon whether you're on a certain committee on campus here, and make sure you, that you are in the uh, discipline that you want to be in in order to enter scores. So some of you guys may have multiple fields. So if you are in athletics and then you're also in psychology, you will have two tabs here to enter. And the other thing that you have to be mindful of, I don't know why Illumin does this, but it is always a semester ahead whatever it's at. So if you need to go back to whichever semester, you can go back to fall 18. All right, or for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go back to spring 18 because I have everything set up for that. Right, these are the classes that I teach. And I'm going to scroll down, and you'll find it right here. Notice I've uh, got some green check marks over here for this class, and this means that everything is all done. You have put in everything. Uh, there's no students that are missing. <clears throat> over here, I see I did the first SLO already as a trial run. I'm going to do this one, and it actually even tells you I have 18 students in the class and I have zero assessments done for those students. So all you gotta do is click either to this view here, and this is called the rubric view. I'll talk to you about that in just a bit. This is called the scorecard view. Uh, the preference is that you use the scorecard view. It's almost like grades. When you click the scorecard view, it'll come up. And as you see along the side here, you have the student names up here. In the first column, the SLO itself looks like we're factoring a trinomial. And then you have the expectations. 5 is technically like an A for the assignment. 4 is the B. C is a 3. Then you have uh, 2 being the D. F is the uh, 1 value. And then the NA means the student did not take the test itself. So you had that student did not take the test. I need to go back to my... Um, <coughs> my record book and I'm going to pull up the exams here and to see what people got when so let me quickly enter scores this is what you do is you just kind of quickly enter scores like that that's a three that's a four that person got a four a four a three a three all right and then you just go all the way down the list and then when you click on it we'll see what happens over here before we do that let me go and show you the other view that I was talking about. So under actions, you can directly go to these. You don't want to go to these because you're entering scores, but you have a different view in order to enter scores called the rubric view. So clicking on that, and notice what it's going to do. It's going to present one student at a time. So here's this first student. Notice, remember on the, from the previous screen, they had a three. And then you click on students as they go. So the next student here, keep on going. Next student. All right, now you should see the fact that there are uh, a really dark blue. Let me go back to the first student. There is a really dark blue haze right here. That's the first student. that I'm, That's the current student that I'm doing. The, uh, the sky blue people are the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth student here. That means they have already grades entered for themselves already. And then the very, very light blue names over here, that means they don't even have any 
scores entered yet. All right, so that's the distinction there. So what makes the rubric view a little bit better is if you want to enter comments. So if you want to enter assessment comments, maybe it's from the student themselves, maybe it is uh, your comments per student, you can enter them here. But I think most faculty members, they're going to go back and they're just going to use the scorecard view. Easiest in my opinion. You're giving them a score, you're, and it's going to tabulate it for you. So let me go down the list. Let me finish scoring my, my class here. Yep, this is live, so I actually have to enter scores. This is me entering scores for this class, so I'm just checking to make sure all the blue marks are there. Make sure I did not miss a student. If you will miss a student, <clears throat> then when you go back, you'll see that you have 1 out of 18 or 2 out of 18 still to continue. All right, so you got one of two options. You can cancel. That means it's going to clear everything up. You're going to start all over again. Probably don't want to do that. You can save, and that will just say your scores have been saved. You're going to come back to them to finish it up. So that's what the save button is. This is save and continue to reflection or continue to the reflection template. That's the one you want to click as you're submitting scores and you are going to go on to the reflection template. So now you are really filling out questions based upon the test itself. Uh, we as a committee want to shorten this list down. Uh, notice the first three questions here focus just on the assessment method on the test itself what did you use for it and there's three questions to ask I think we're gonna build this down to just one single question all right the next questions here the next one two three that makes you interact with the data itself so how's the data itself the last two talk about this was more of a individual 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 um, change in the class itself and this one's going to talk more of a department change in the class and that's kind of what you want to think of those last two questions and so let's go back up here so look at the assessment method itself was the assessment aligned with the learning outcome that's what you want to think about was it aligned with the learning outcome and uh, some of these are just yes or no questions and I do have answers to some of those and this one yeah I looked at the assessment method itself and was it aligned did it test what you're supposed to test next question was is this the best way to test this was it a satisfactory way to assess this activity so think to yourself if, the, if you did a multiple choice exam and you're thinking no this actually should be a fill-in exam or uh, this really should be an essay this is not really meeting the outcome here and so that's you would you would uh, answer there. I'm going to say yes for mine because I think it was. And then was the data valid or accurate? So did you do the did you do it standardized? Did you do it the same way? Did you do it so that uh, you can get a a good data set for this activity? All right. Um, <clears throat> so one class received study guides, another one did not. Well, that kind of does not make this valid. And accurate so you want to sort of test the same way as much as you can because you're going to be comparing data sets to each other so I'm gonna say yes I did or is there anything surprising or unexpected in the data and so as I was looking at the data before um, actually looking at the sets that I just entered I'm gonna say none the average score is about where I thought it should be you could say I did not expect the grades to be so low you could also say, I did not expect the grades to be so good. Those are two different possibilities as well here. Uh, you can also mention the fact that if it's a um, you know safety course for lab or something like that, then you need everybody to be at 
or it's the very, very easy SLO compared to the very difficult SLO at the end of the class. So all those are sort of things, or anything unexpected in the data set, or the number of students missing the SLO exam. Is that an issue? Okay. All right, now we're talking about assessment of uh, performance of students. And then uh, just so a brief summary. What was the performance of students? Uh, was there anything outstanding in the form? Uh, yeah, as I looked at the test themselves, I noticed that on the on the questions that I posed, almost all the students did get the easy one correct. All right, so uh, yeah, everybody got the first one almost. I think there's one student that missed the first one, and then as the questions got progressively more difficult, then of course more and more students started to fail. Okay, uh, what student issues were revealed? And uh, just like I said before, the more difficult the question, the more things started to become problems. And so I'm thinking this is a Math 63 course. This is a, a, a course that students have already seen factoring before. We start off with factoring at the beginning of the year. So they should be quite comfortable with factoring already. So as I thought about it and as an individual instructor, I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe the reason why they, they um, did not do so well on the more difficult questions is because I don't pose enough good difficult factoring questions. So uh, I think I could really spend more time on the more difficult factoring stuff in this class and that will give them a little preparatory exam instead of just the easy ones and focus on those only. Alright, so as an individual instructor I'm thinking as, a, as my class goes that's what I'm going to do. Now you move on to the department. So now the question is as a department is there something that needs to be really changed and you're thinking here, you're thinking of a curriculum changing, you think of uh, how you assess the SLO together as a class uh, how's it all going to happen? So that's where this comes in. This is the question is this is definitely going to be a change in the department. All right. Um, for this one, since this is actually a real SLO, you can say no, nope, not this time. So I put not this time. All right. You can save it as a draft, and later on you'll come back to it and you'll sort of see it, and you can finish it up if you didn't have time. Submit and share means you submit it, share it, and your name is going to be with the results themselves. So uh, two years later when you're doing program review you can come back and uh, you'll have these comments written down and uh, you can take these comments and you can put them into your program review. You can submit it on anonymously as well and again your name is not going to be attached to them. Uh, what's Which way should we go? I think for the most part we probably should go this way because two years later as you're looking comments from this and you're looking at trinomial factoring and you're saying hey we have a program that does factoring you probably want to go back to the faculty member that that actually said hey I, I want to do this so um, preference is the one in the middle if you really really don't want to see your name on things then uh, then hit the anonymous but all right I'm gonna click this button and what happens is there it is you get to look at this is called requests of findings this is if you want to dig deeper into it and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, action plans, we didn't have any, but action means, uh, okay, as a department we're going to change this now and this is what an action plan is. Results Explore tells you you're going to go and look at actually the results themselves. You want to see it as compared to, so you're going to see your results as compared to the rest of the uh, instructors on campus. That's what you want to see. You can also see longitudinal data as well. Or you can go back to the classes and you can start over on the next SLO. That's what I'm going to do right now. Alright, so notice I'm still faculty, I'm still in math, and it's still the spring 18 semester that I've set up. So as I go back down the list, that's what I did. I did SLO number two, and now it has a nice green check mark. We're good, and now we're ready to do SLO number three.